Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. So I've been seeing quite a few of these videos online lately, showing people's game dev workflow, showing what tools they use to create their games. Now I've created a few free games myself and each time I've changed my workflow and how I go around making games and for the past three years I've stuck with the same workflow and it's worked for me. So we're going to jump into it today and explore the 10 tools I use in my game dev workflow. So let's get started. So I was kind of thinking best place to start with this and I listed out all the tools I use and I got to nine. And that's going to annoy a lot of people if I just stick at nine. So right at the beginning I started with my my OS, my operating system, what I use. Because, as many of you may know, I use Linux as my daily driver. I don't use Windows or Mac. I've been running Linux for over 10 years now. Uh, only my main driver for like 8 years, because it's really evolved into it. So I use the operating system Manjaro Linux. I use the GNOME theme, that means I've got all my gnome goodness, and I've used that theme for the longest. It's so hard to break away from it because it just becomes muscle memory after that long. But this is the operating system I use. It's super lightweight. Most of the time, you can't see it at the top corner. I'm using 2-3% CPU on idle, sometimes zero, even though my computer's packed with things, because it's so lightweight. I'm not recommending everybody jump ship to Linux, it takes some time to get used to. You've seen all the videos from everybody. I tried Linux for a week. I've tried it for 10 years. It works for me. <laughs> so that's what I use as my main operating system. So that aside, let's get into the first main tool I use, and that's going to be Unreal. I use Unreal Engine for all of my game development. I used to use Unity for like 10 years, 15 years, I don't know, however long it was free, I basically started then. And then, as of three years ago, I basically moved to Unreal because I wanted to take my personal game dev more serious. I needed more hand-holding with the graphics because I'm not an artist. Unreal, at the time, provided much better workflows and everybody around me was using Unreal for jobs and such. So, I switched to Unreal. Unreal isn't, of course, for everybody. Unity, CryEngine, the other one that's completely gone past my mind that people really love at the moment, it's all Godot. That one, Godot. Different game engines are for different needs. You pick what works best for you. Change engines every year if you really want to. It's entirely up to you. For me, I use Unreal Engine. That is my engine of choice and I'm really enjoying it so far. The next tool I use is a photo editing application or drawing application. And the one I use is Critter. Critter is an open source free Photoshop alternative, I guess you could say. Photoshop used to be really good. It's now mega expensive and doesn't really work very well on Linux in my opinion, so I switched to Critter like four or five years ago, and I've never really looked back. It's got all of the same features in, so we can just start a custom document. You know, we've got our brushes, I can draw funky stuff like a figure eight apparently, I've got all my different brushes I want. It works for me. I don't use it for everything, so you can see I was generating some icons for my game yesterday. Previously I was marking off locations on the... Um, Lego Marvel Super Heroes map, but I use it for all sorts, texture editing, drawing quick little plot lines in so you know pirate games use as paint, I use Critter. That's really it, it works really well, it's completely free, it's super lightweight as well. The next tool I use is one called Obsidian. Obsidian is a type of markdown documentation app, but it's far much more than just documentation. You can add images, links, uh, you can basically build up an entire documentation framework for your game. I use it for basic note taking and, well I say basic, more, more advanced than basic but not advanced, but I use it for all of my note taking across all sorts of things. You've got all sorts of plugins you can do, links where you can create it together, canvases to sh show things, plugins. I've even got a plugin where I can now sync across with other people and all code in the same document at the same time. I use it as my primary note taking app so if I ever write anything down I put it all down. You can see I've got all my ideas in this particular one I'm showing. So you can see I've got my World War game. I simply click across and type. Um, Markdown for those of you that don't know is a type of documentation language. If I go to source mode you can see it's built up of hashes and specific symbols to create it. So I can come in and type uh, title, hey YouTube, let's make that bold, 
And as you can see, as I type, it basically formats it. I can add images if I want to, or links. There, I've added a link to Google so I can click it. I can link to all the documents and do everything I need. It works really, really, really well. And you can build complex documents that just work better than Word, really, in my opinion, because it's it's broke down more. I've even created entire websites based on Markdown documentation, so it really does work very nicely. The next tool I'm going to show you is how I track all of my tasks. So you'll hear people throw buzzwords around like Trello or DevOps, Jira board, stuff like that. They are basically task-taking boards. That's all they are. And there's loads of different ones in the world you can use. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. I've got an open source one I use called Camboard. And basically, I'm showing an old games board here that I've worked on. You set your columns, you set your tasks, you work on it, you move it along. And then basically, when you get to the end, you're done. That's it. I use this for all of my projects. Whether it's my YouTube series, because I've got loads on there. My YouTube shorts. Other games I'm working on, client work, to-do lists, it's all in different cam boards that I have. I host this locally at home, so I can just access it whenever I need to. And I basically come in, add all my tasks, move them along, and I know where I am with everything. It works really, really well. I highly recommend you get in some sort of cam board. It doesn't have to be this. You can get anything you want, as long as it works for you. That's the important thing. Some of the more expensive ones will probably come with features where it can build your own real game. You can reference things directly from source control and stuff like that. For me, this basic setup works really well. I share it with all the people I work with who need to look at specific things. And we all know where we are at any point. I can also come in, I can edit them, and I can add details if I need to. I can attach images. It works fantastic. The next tool I'm going to show you is my audio editing application. Now, I don't use anything fancy because I'm not an audio engineer. I'm just a regular guy. I'm just a programmer. I'm a geek. Blah. But I use a tool called Tenacity to edit my audio. Now, you might be saying, I've never heard of Tenacity. Not a lot of people have. Some people may have heard of Audacium. That's another version. They all basically come from Audacity, which you may have heard of. I stopped using Audacity a few years ago because it came out, it had a bunch of malware or spyware in it where people were recording what you were doing telemetry stuff i was not having that i like my privacy on my linux that's what i do so i browsed around and i moved from audacium but then that started fading away so i moved to tenacity it is basically audacity that's it and it's an audio editing tool that i've got a bunch of different stuff i use to set my voice up i can come in i can record something and it plays it back. I can do minor tweaks if I need to. I've got a macro that does a bunch of settings for me. You can see something. There you go. It does everything I need. It's super simple. If you are a more complex audio engineer, you'll probably use something bigger and better. I'm not, like I mentioned. So Tenacity works for me. It's free. It's open source. It's across every operating system you could want it on, really. The next tool I'm going to show you is one of the biggest things that, if you take away anything from this video, is this is Perforce, or any kind of source control. Source control, for those of you that don't know, is a way to back up your projects, but not just a single backup. It lets you view backups and tell you what's changed, and it monitors progress. It's source control, version control is another common name for it. It's so much better than just uploading backups to Google Cloud or something because you can pick and choose specifically what you want. So in this case, I use Perforce. It's one of the most popular ones to use with game development. Companies like Ubisoft, even though they're not doing great at the moment by the sounds of it, and other big companies do use Perforce. You can host it in the cloud. You can pay them to host it. I have a local computer downstairs that I've just spun up a quick hard drive on, and I have Perforce running on that internally for my home network. It's super simple to get set up. I actually have a video on setting up in the cloud if you ever want it. It works super, super well. It's so easy to do. I can literally come and make changes. So I can come in and say optimizing game models. And then I can literally submit it. It will upload all the changes I've done to the server. And then once it's done, I can literally come over to my history. I can see what's changed and when at any point. So you can see I've done goblin optimizations recently. I can even delve deeper and say 
well, what have I changed on this specific map? And it will tell me what has changed and when. Then I can recover that and carry on. It's super easy to do. You may have heard some people use Git instead. Git is another source control or version control. However, it is better suited to text-based backups. So things like website. It's not fantastic for Unreal, although it does work. So I guess what I'm getting at is if you don't make any backups already, do some backups no matter what it is. Back it up to Google Drive, Mega, anything you want. Make a backup of your game. You will regret it. If you're using Google Drive or OneDrive, turn off auto sync. You're going to crash your project. You will get issues. It will overwrite it. It will badly sync. Don't use auto syncing on projects like this. You, it will just not go well. And then just basically figure out what version control works for you. In, for my case and a lot of people's cases, Perforce does work, but it can feel like you're bringing a bazooka to kill a fly. And just as I was about to show you my next product, it decided it needed to start updating itself, that's fine. The next software I use is Blender. Blender is a 3D application that allows you to create 3D models, 2D models now, and all sorts of other things. It's completely free, it's being used in all sorts of companies around the world, I think even Disney's using it now. It's super easy to do, and I can import all my models, modify them to my heart's content, and not have any issues. There is a little bit of a learning curve. Just go and watch one of the donut tutorials and you'll be a master to do all the basic stuff you need afterwards. Other popular programs like 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, stuff like that, they all work too. For me, I use Blender because it's available across every operating system and it's just really lightweight. It takes less than a few seconds to load up. It's so good. So you can see, I have my Manny character here and... Well, yeah, it's just really easy to use. Sometimes it takes a little bit of Googling to find what you need. But then when you get it, you can, you know, make his head bigger or anything you want. It is super easy to get into. If you don't have a 3D application and you're working on a 3D game, just install Blender. Just get used to it. It's so easy. You've got everything you need really quickly. It's available on Steam, app stores, everywhere. So the next one I'm going to talk about is going to be a little bit weird because everybody who knows Unreal Engine will typically use the Epic Game Store. And for the longest time, Epic Game Store was the only way you could access Unreal assets and stuff like that. So you can see the Epic Game Store. However, it wasn't available on Linux to its fullest extent, so you couldn't use it. So when I planned out this tutorial, I was actually going to show you the Epic Asset Manager, which is the old tool I used to use. And it's basically an open source version of the marketplace, except it just uses Epic's APIs instead. And it does work really, really well until they released Fab a few days ago. So now, not only can I access the Epic Game Store, which doesn't work. So you can see if I install Wonderscape, it doesn't just seem to work at all. It won't download assets for me at the moment. But also it's broken my Epic Asset Manager, so I can't even find half the plugins that I would normally use, Wonderscape's not there. So until Epic or these asset people fix whatever they need to, you need some sort of asset manager. <laughs> Typically, people are going to use the Epic Game Store. If, if I can start downloading assets again, I'll use that. But one type of asset downloading tool is what I use. Typically, I use the Epic Asset Manager, but recently the Epic Game Store started working better, so I was using that for a while. But you just need some way of accessing your Unreal plugins. Unfortunately, you can't download the plugins without one of these, which sucks a little bit, but it's one of the things Unreal does. The last tool I'm going to show you is the way I code. Because 9 times out of 10, because for the most people, they probably won't want to code. But for those of you that do want to code in Unreal, you're going to need some type of editor. Visual Studio is normally the go-to, but it's big, bulky, it can be slow. Visual Studio Code is okay, but it takes a bunch of work to set up. I've got into the JetBrains ecosystem myself. That's what I like using. I use it for my web design. I use it for my games programming. So you can see I've got a very nice engine here called Rider. That's part of the JetBrains package. It lets me code everything I need. I've got tutorials online if you need to set it up on Linux or even Windows, either way. But you can see I can come and edit my entire project super, super easily. And it just works for me. It's got really nice IntelliSense. So if I come in and go, uh, I don't know, 
current speaker avatar let's say current avatar and then we'll go destroy there we go yeah so it, oh, this is the thing i like about the jetbrains ecosystem their intellisense is unrivaled it's so quick to do anything you want and even in c++ so i can like come down here and go oh i've got a face mesh here what properties have i got a face mesh we can see i've got the stop there you go i'll pull stop on it perfect and it does it really nicely they're even adding in ai stuff now so you can like code things super super quickly but i do tend to use other jetbrains products as well so i use rider which is now free actually if you're non-commercial you can get rider for free to work with unreal so you may as well give it a try it works really really well it's one of them things that once you use it, you're probably not going to want to go back to Visual Studio once you learn it because it's so rapid. I don't actually know any devs who have used a JetBrains product and wanted to move back, to be fair. But I do use other JetBrains products. So I use DataGrip if I'm doing any database work. You sometimes do database work in games design, but I use it more for web design. And I use WebStorm as well, but that is for website stuff. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all of my game workflows, all the tools I use to make games on a daily basis. We've gone through my operator system, my, op my engine of choice, my draw 2D drawing, my 3D program, my note taking, my task system, audio editing, version control, asset downloading, and other stuff like that. If you've watched any of my previous post-implementation reviews of games, you know I often talk about a product called ADAM, which is a digital asset management system. I am working on coding my own because none of the ones I found did exactly what I wanted and I wanted mine to work in the way I like. And it was going to be absolutely epic when it was finished, but it's taking a lot of time. There's a reason companies charge so much for you to use their systems. So, but when it's done, I will gladly show it off. We can maybe even roll something out for people to use it, but it's going to take a while. But what that's going to do is basically integrate with Unreal and your web browser, app stuff, anything you need. And it will basically list every single asset you own, whether it's in your game or not. With a click of a button, you'll be able to have the asset in your world super, super easily. And everything will be tagged. Everything will be noted about. That's what an asset management system does. You say you want a boat. And it will tell you every single boat, whether it's in your game, in another pack, anywhere you need it. And you can just tap it. It will give you everything you need. That is not part of my workflow currently. So I have to use file searching to find what I want, which is a horrendous nightmare. But it's what I've got for now. So that's why I've not included that one. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. There is my 10 game dev workflow tools. It is a bit different and nobody's going to want to come along and use my exact tool set it will be different for everybody if you've not used one of these tools and you're planning to let me know below is there something different that you use or something i may have missed let me know below and we can build up an awesome collection of tools so thank you for watching i hope this helped if you've started using any of the tools do let me know it'll be interesting to know what you've missed thank you for watching my name is decryption and i will see you next time <laughs>